Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Adam Chapdelaine. and I work as the town manager uh, for the town of Arlington. And welcome to our first virtual town forum. Uh, this will hopefully be the first in a series where we'll focus on different topics. Uh, we may even repeat this topic uh, to, to make sure that we're reaching as many people as possible. Uh, today, we want to talk, um, I want to talk very briefly about some of our general efforts in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, but we want to spend the bulk of our time uh, having Jenny Rate talk about uh, the programs that we are, um, we are putting together as well as those that we're helping facilitate with other layers of government for small businesses and nonprofits. So generally, I'll say um, we have really been following the guidance and working through our Board of Health and our Department of Health and Human Services in our response to this pandemic. All decisions we're making are based on the best public health information that we have in trying to respect, uh, excuse me, protect as many residents as possible and break the lines of transmission of COVID-19. Uh, we of course understand that these decisions that have been made from the public health perspective are having significant economic ramifications uh, and that's gonna be a big focus of what we talk about today. So um, Jenny will talk a little bit about the agenda um, but what I do want to mention is uh, once we get through Jenny's presentation, we will, then, uh, we will then allow a question and answer period, and I'll be asking everybody to use the question and answer function through Zoom, and we'll then go through those questions and answer as many as we can within the time allotted. So I will wrap up my remarks now, and I will turn it over to Jenny to walk through the presentation. Thank you so much, Adam. Um, you. If you would advance to that next slide. Yep. Uh oh. Wait, our, fir our first technical difficulty. There we go. Um, not yet. <laughs> there we go. So, um, so good afternoon, everybody, and thank you, Adam, for opening this discussion. I'm Jenny Raid. I'm the director of planning and community development for the town of Arlington. Um, and I just want to introduce you first to the agenda for uh, this forum today. The first thing is just to explain the objectives. Really, we want to be able to provide you with updates to Arlington small businesses and the nonprofit community on what the town has been doing in response to COVID-19, to be able to answer any questions, and to hear from forum participants about the challenges that they are currently facing. Um, we're hoping that we can gather a lot of information from the people who are participating today so that it will inform future forums that we hope to uh, provide to you in the future. So uh, the first part obviously was our opening remarks and an update on town operations from Adam. I'm going to provide you with an update on information and resources that are available for small businesses and nonprofit organizations. We're going to have Q&A and comments from the small business and nonprofit community then we'll wrap it up with the closing remarks and some discussion about potential future virtual meetings. Um, so if you would go back to that first slide, please, Adam. So just a, a quick uh, understanding of my department. We do planning and community development for the town. Members from my department have been actively working with the leadership team who've been working on this emergency response to carry out the town's COVID-19 response, providing supports and information to the business community, creating engagement opportunities and, for, and spaces for people to connect while they're at home, and helping to ease the burden of the departments that are involved in the emergency response. The department will also be administering additional federal funds, which I'll talk about, that will be directed to initiatives to help address those most in need right now, particularly those facing needs with rental and business assistance. Allie Carter, who is actually on the line and will be joining us um, during our Q&A, she's the town's economic development coordinator, and she'll be joining us um, so that she can also answer some of the questions as they emerge through this forum. Um, I really want to thank her for all the work that she did in helping us to develop this forum and also developing the business resource page on the town's website. There are a few important points to note before I outline the resources that are available to Arlington businesses and nonprofits. The situation continues to be rapidly developing from both a public health and an economic perspective. The state and federal government continues to respond. It is a bit slow, but they are intending to pr provide increased resources and financial support in this response. There will be new sources of support to report at future forums, including from the state. 
So if you could now go to the website with the um, town's economic development business resources. For those of you who are familiar with the town's website, on the main landing page, there is a button that leads to the town's COVID response and also directly goes to the business resource support page. The online resources include a curated list of businesses that remain open, for example, retailers that are accepting online orders, selling gift cards and other things. Um, and as you may know, of course, Governor Charlie Baker has issued an emergency order that required all businesses and organizations that do not provide COVID-19 essential services to close their physical workplaces and facilities to workers, customers, and to the public. These businesses are encouraged to continue operations remotely, of course, and some of them have continued to do that and others have made other business decisions. Governor Baker's order is in effect through May 4th. This list that we are maintaining on the town's website helps to communicate with which essential businesses remain open, the hours that they're open, and the contact information that's available, among other details if they have been provided as part of that page. The town via the Department of Health and Human Services continues to provide detailed operational guidance to essential businesses. Additionally, a new initiative called Amazing Arlington, which is a community engagement initiative primarily, is launching new resources to help people maintain connections and support the local business community. Lastly, Ali will be, will be available, not just here on this forum, but continues to remain available by phone and email for direct support and guidance. Her contact information will be made available at the close of this forum. The Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, known as CARES, the CARES Act, made $349 billion available to Small Business Administration loans. I want to highlight a couple of those opportunities that are available right now. The first is known as the Paycheck Protection Program. This is a 100% federally guaranteed loan directed at supporting the retention of employees. Loans are up to $10 million with a 0.5% interest rate and a two-year maturity. There are no payments for the first six months. There are many organizations, not just businesses, that qualify for this program support. Businesses, nonprofits, veterans organizations, sole proprietors, self-employed individuals, and independent contractors with 500 or fewer employees are all eligible to apply. The program is now open and applications must be submitted by June 30th through any existing SBA 7A lender or through any participating federally insured depository institution or federally insured credit institution, credit union, excuse me. The loan will be forgiven if all employees are kept on the payroll for eight weeks and the money is used for payroll, rent, mortgage interest, or utilities. As I mentioned, the program is currently active and it's retroactive from February 15th, 2020. So employers can rehire recently laid off employees through June 30th, 2020. The other program is called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance, which is a part of the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. The advance, however, is a $10,000 um, advance that is available to applicants who have been approved for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. It essentially makes cash available right away if you've applied for that disaster loan. And you can apply for that right now if you need funding and cash. The website through the SBA provides instructions on how to submit that application for both the loan and the loan advance. The advance can be used for any immediate business expenses and does not need to be repaid. The other potential SBA opportunity is an emergency grant program that's available to provide a small infusion of cash, less than the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance, which is tied to the other loan program. Also, the Small Business Debt Relief Program can help businesses keep up with required payments or current or potential SBA loans. If you have not done so already, we encourage you to register for updates through the SBA at sba.gov slash updates. Additionally, the town locally is looking to develop an emergency program for microenterprises serving low to moderate income employees. The town receives $1 million annually in community development block grant funds, which come directly from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. The CARES Act, as I mentioned earlier, also provided supplemental funding to states and local governments in the 
form of CDBG funds. $2 million are expected for entitlement communities, including Arlington. Arlington will be receiving an approximately $650,000, which will be available immediately upon the award of the contract. A portion of these funds will be devoted to serving the small business community, as well as nonprofit institutions who are serving low to moderate income individuals. More details about this program will be forthcoming and we anticipate releasing them next week. We will be joining with Worcester, Fitchburg, Cambridge, and Boston in this response to serve the small business community and institutions that provide critical infrastructure um, in normal times. Additional resources are available to nonprofit cultural and arts organizations that I also want to talk about. Last week, the Massachusetts Cultural Council launched two COVID-19 relief efforts to help both individual artists and cultural organizations to address the economic impact associated with the coronavirus pandemic and associated social distancing measures. As we know from our Arts and Culture Action Plan, there are many individual artists that operate in Arlington, as well as those many cultural institutions, museums, and other operations that we all treasure. The COVID-19 Relief Fund for Individuals is the first of them that I want to talk about. This relief fund supports individuals whose creative practices and incomes are adversely impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. Unrestricted grants of $1,000 are available to individual artists and independent teaching artists, humanists, and scientists in Massachusetts who have lost income derived from their work as a direct result of COVID-19 related cancellations and closures. The program guidelines and online application are available today, and the application deadline is April 22nd. On the screen, there are a couple of, um, there are a few deadlines that are coming up that everybody should be aware of. The one that I just mentioned is also on the screen. The Safe Harbors COVID-19 initiative for cultural organizations is more broadly available to support cultural nonprofits, to encourage access to COVID-19 assistance offered through the federal government, and to also help organizations understand their current financial challenges and craft a responsible strategy going forward. Additionally, the Gaming Mitigation Program, which is also noted on the screen, has a very, very quick deadline. That's this Friday, April 17th. And this is available to all performing arts organizations who present touring shows and artists are encouraged to review the program guidelines to determine if they may be eligible to apply. The Nonprofit Finance Fund is another opportunity, providing webinars and online resources, coupled with capacity building, coaching services, and many other opportunities to assist nonprofits in preparing plans and making decisions, particularly during this very challenging financial and economic time. The non the National Council of Nonprofits is another entity that also provides these resources, as well as the Massachusetts Nonprofit Network. Many of these resources are noted on the town's website in relationship to our business uh, resource supports during COVID-19. Um, lastly, the two sources that I wanted to mention would also be the COVID-19 Relief Fund, which is a fund that is supporting frontline healthcare professionals, first responders and other essential workers who need assistance, households who are disproportionately affected by the impact of COVID-19, people facing food insecurity, and others. I also want to note that there is currently um, a bill that is awaiting passage, hopefully by the Senate, which would enact an eviction and foreclosure moratorium, which is really critical at this time, especially given the fact that deadlines are coming up for people's rent and mortgage payments. There are many different elements to this bill, and we are hoping that our delegation will act swiftly in order to address these measures and support people in the community. I will note that we have been working with our regional partners, as well as our state and federal delegations in order to best serve this community. We look forward to the conversation ahead with you, and we are open to answering your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. So I'll remind everybody, for anybody who's joined since we started, if they have questions, if they could um, input those questions into the question and answer function, we'll read those. And between myself, uh, Jenny, and Allie, do our best to answer those questions. I, I did see one attendee had their, their hand raised. But if they could please, um, please write their question into the question and answer function, we'd very much appreciate that. So the first question is, 
can you talk about the best and worst case scenarios for gradual uh, slash rollout opening of the town's larger small businesses, specifically venues such as the Regent, the Capitol, and Arlington Friends of the Drama, which rely on large public gatherings to survive. It's becoming increasingly, prob increasingly problematic to schedule, reschedule, postpone, cancel future events with such uncertainty. Any information, even if preliminary, would be helpful. So I'm, I'm happy to take my best crack at that, uh, Jenny and Allie, and if you want to follow up on my answer, um, that would be great. So what I'll, what I'll say to that is, it's, it is very hard for us to provide a substantive or fact-based answer to that question. Um, I think the best answer I can give is, um, as many of us probably read in the Globe, uh, either yesterday or, or this morning, uh, that a group of Northeastern um, governors, as well as some West Coast governors, are beginning to collaborate on putting together a combined or a comprehensive plan for uh, the gradual reopening of the economies in various states uh, and in contiguous states. And I think that makes a lot of sense because if one state acts faster or slower than another, it could counteract the, the good efforts that have already been put in place in terms of social distance. So I, I can't honestly tell anybody when I think larger small businesses, especially places that as described, um, depend on larger gatherings when they might be able to reopen. But what I can say is I think based on those discussions that will be starting at the state level, that over the course of the next, let's say 15 to 30 days, uh, especially leading up to May 4th, which right now is the date the governor has the non-essential um, non -essential business closure in place, we'll start to learn more and more. Uh, so I don't, I hate to not have an answer because I know how critical it is for some of our, um, again, l larger small businesses in Arlington that are so critical and important to Arlington. But as we learn more, as more data becomes available, and as state leaders begin to advise in regards to these measures, we'll, um, we'll do our best to keep the town uh, and, and the business owners informed. So the next question is, do we know if there are additional funds coming uh, for EIDL? It seems like the $10,000 grants have already been greatly reduced. I can take that one, Adam. Thanks, so. Ellen. Sure. Um, so I think the, there's been some issues with how the various aspects of the CARES Act have rolled out. And I think some of the messaging that came out initially was a little bit confusing to folks because it, I think many folks interpreted it, and I did myself, as um, that businesses could get a $10,000 grant for applying when they applied and then, you know, then there was the rest of it. Um, it more specifically is a cap at $10,000 and it's $1,000 per employee up to 10,000. Um, I don't think that was a change. I think that was actually a change only in language um, with the realization that people misunderstood. Um, I've heard that there's already a sense that folks know that what's happening is probably not enough um, and are planning for more. Um, but right now there are no detailed proposals about any expansion of what is in the CARES Act uh, as of right now. Thank you, Allie. Uh, the next question is, I'm hearing from um, my business owner that funds are not being made available yet specifically by Leader Bank or TD Bank, and he has had that corroborated by his accountant. Are we aware that any funds have been given to businesses locally yet? I can answer that one um, as well. So I have been on calls at least once a week with um, the Massachusetts chapter of the SBA, um, and they, for the past two weeks, have been saying that they have, are dispersing funds um, they're working through them. So none of this is happening as quickly as anyone wants it to. Um, even speaking with local bank managers, um, they are overwhelmed with the number of applications they have. Um, something on the order of like a hundred times more applications than they usually have in the pipeline is what they're working with. And this isn't a national bank. This is one of our small local banks. So 
everyone is struggling to keep a pace with the level of need. Um, I, having said that, I have not personally heard from any Arlington business owner that they have started receiving any of their funds um, from CARES Act support that they've requested. Um, but the SBA uh, has been assuring us that it is starting and the money is flowing. Hopefully we'll see that on the local level soon. Thank you, Allie. So there are not, uh, there are no other questions in the Q&A form right now. Um, you've got plenty of time. If anybody, well, when, look at that, one just came in. So regarding the EIDL loans that were announced yesterday uh, and the, that the cap per applicant would be 15,000, the loans were uh, to be up to 2 million. So it's clear that the demand has been far greater than the funds allocated to this program. Allie, would you like to comment on that? Is that your, is, you, you share that sense? Yeah. Um, and there's been, um, many of you have probably seen these articles, but there's been uh, some pushback a little bit too from people that it's, it's not, it's a sort of square peg in a round hole um, that, you know, particularly for PPP, the Paycheck Protection, Protection Program, that people can't actually bring their employees back to work right now. They could, but then they may have to lay them off again in another eight weeks. And since you're supposed to spend 75% of that funding on um, payroll and only 25% is meant for other expenses, it's almost setting people up to misuse it and then therefore not have it be a loan uh, I'm sorry, a grant, but to have it be a loan. If you use it correctly, the grant, the loan is forgiven and turns into a grant. Um, so I think there are people working on correcting um, the programs that are out there um, and whatever comes next will be a little more responsive, but um, the, the whole thing is moving so fast. I think when these programs were being developed two or three weeks ago or maybe four, um, they were responding to what they saw on the ground at that time and things have changed so much then. Um, but you're correct, there's just, there's more need out there. Thank you, Ellie. So I see uh, someone in the Q&A has said they have two questions and I'm assuming they're typing them in right now if we wanna hold on for just a moment. I'll just Oh, I was going to say, I, I, I just could add to the, the last question a little bit or just to expand on the fact that it is a very evolving situation and that once things do reopen, there's going to be a new economic impact to think about and that we're going to have to be pivoting to think about the sources of support and the resources that are needed in order to be able to roll that out and reopen. And I think that our state uh, delegation as well as our federal delegation need to be aware of the issues that people are facing in order to be able to reopen, essentially. Um, so any any information or feedback that you can provide directly to Ali um, would be very useful to us and also be able to communicate that up um, so that we can advocate on your behalf and get the resources more quickly and also be able to protect you as you reopen. So two more, uh, two questions have come in. Uh, 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 a business owner saying, no one I know has received any funds uh, and I applied as early as possible for the PPP and over two weeks ago for the 10K EIDL grant. Could the town put out a request uh, for any business owners to let the town know if any money does come through so that we can then share it with other business owners because it would be helpful for business owners to know if others are beginning to receive it? Yeah, I would love to hear back from anyone. If anyone's willing to share that information with me, I'd be um, so grateful for it. Um, that's actually so much of what I've learned about these programs is through your experiences and hearing your stories about how it's been somewhat problematic applying for it, uh, waiting on hold forever for customer service and then getting disconnected at the end of, you know, an hour and a half wait. Um, I cannot imagine how frustrating that is. Um, so please share those stories with me. And if I start hearing good things or helpful hints, I can share that with other folks. 
I want to apologize in advance because my cat is coming up on me. I don't mean to make light of this situation, but if you're watching this video, I'm being approached from the rear by a cat who might jump on me. Sorry. I just wonder, uh, well, while there's a cat interference, um, I just want to make it, uh, put a plug in actually for Allie's survey that is still posted on the town's website. Um, that was really something that we pulled together early on, and it, it may not be as applicable or relevant right now, but it's still important for us to understand what you're going through in, as a local business owner or even a nonprofit organization so we can better understand how to help you. Uh, but also, Ali uh, will be working with Kelly Linema to help to update that, <laughs> that survey um, to uh, be a little bit more current and also future thinking. Thank you, Jenny. Don't worry about the cat alley. It's all, this is just part of this new world order we have here. Um, so we have three more questions that have come in. Uh, one is regarding the EIDL loan. Um, do we know if one can accept uh, up to the $10,000 grant, but not accept the loan? And also, uh, Jenny mentioned that the PPP loan had 5% interest, um, but I read that it was 1%. Uh, could we clarify that? Um, I don't believe, I can check and confirm this, but I do not believe that you can apply for the EIDL loan and then just take the grant. I'm, I'm not really sure. I, I know that you can get the grant even if you're rejected for the loan application, um, but I don't know if you get the grant and then you're offered the loan application you say, no thanks, I'm just gonna keep. I'm not sure how that would work. I can find out. Um, but I, early on, um, two or three weeks ago, I was encouraging people that even if you didn't technically um, qualify for the loan, that it was good to apply for it anyway because it put you in the pipeline and if things were um, opening up because there was more need, then, you know, then the fund could serve that you might become eligible. Um, so I can try and get a sense of folks from the SBA uh, what's coming down the line and what would happen if you were got the grant, were offered the loan, but then rejected it. So I can follow up about that. And how about the interest rate? I, I Another participant has said that the PPP loan first came out at a half percent and then was changed to 1%. Um, Ali or Jenny, yeah. do you have that information in front I, of you? I have said a half percent. I said 0.5%. Okay. Um, it's not supposed to be more than 4%, but I think that it varies depending upon the lender that you go, the lending institution that you go to. I'm not, I'm not, um, you know, I'm, I'm reading basically a comparison between the economic injury disaster loan and the payment at paycheck protection loan program. And the, uh, the comparison is that the interest rate can go not more than 4% on the paycheck protection loan. And for the economic injury disaster loan, it's 3.75% for businesses and 2.75% for nonprofit organizations. Qualifying, I might add, um, there are certain, you know, there are certain eligible nonprofit organizations. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, another question that's come in. Um, if this is a forum, uh, this, this forum that we're holding right now, that will continue, uh, will we have more information that we'll be willing to share about actual distribution of funds by banks to Arlington businesses? Uh, and I, I think, you know, a, a similar question was asked and answered. I think we're willing to do that, right? I think we'll, we'll do our best to gather that information, talk with business owners, talk with banks, and um, when we offer another one of these forums, um, possibly next week, hopefully we could have more information. It would, be, it would be nice if there was good news to share at that point. I think ahead, that at, at a minimum, what I would say that by next week, I and mean, we can certainly speak with lenders in our community and perhaps beyond in greater Boston, because Ali is participating in this regional initiative with other uh, folks in similar positions in other communities in greater Boston. Um, so I think at a minimum, we could find out what types of activity have occurred with lending institution, what kinds of inquiries they're seeing, how quickly things are turning around, and also maybe learn a little bit about um, the challenges that those institutions are having in just getting those programs uh, initiated and, and deployed. Um, that's, that's part of, I think, the challenges we're all learning 
how to do some new things. And um, I think there's, uh, there's that part of the story as well. I would say that later on, it would be very helpful to have the information about who does receive the loans in the end. And hopefully at some point in the future, we would be able to report that very accurately. Great, thank you, Jenny. Uh, another question, a small business uh, is any business under 500 employees. Uh, why don't they address small businesses with under 50 employees with funding? Have either of you heard any talk at the federal or state level about more targeted uh, smaller business funding? Um, it, it starts at 500 because the SBA is, you know, a federal program and it's building on the infrastructure they already have in place. And so on at the federal level, um, I know this doesn't translate well here, but on the federal level, a small business has 500 or fewer employees. So they've just actually um, really lowered the floor a lot of who can be eligible for these funds um, by opening it up to sole proprietors and, and very small micro businesses. Um, with the CDBG funds that we have available or will be having available um, through the town, um, those will go to micro enterprises, which are businesses that have five or fewer employees and the business owner themselves is a low to moderate income earning individual. So we're trying to do that on the local level. Great. And uh, either Ali or Jenny, um, I, I know we're meeting with the CDBG subcommittee on Wednesday to discuss that program and make recommendations, but can you talk a little bit about um, how that process will play out and when we think we might have a program to actually roll out? Yes, absolutely. So uh, we are meeting tomorrow with the CDBG subcommittee to review the plan for how to, re how to um, program those funds. We also don't have a contract yet from HUD, but we anticipate that we will receive that in the next couple of weeks. Um, and electronically so that it can be expedited. Um, my sense is that we will go to the select board in the next couple of weeks and right after that be able to make funds available. Um, that, that's my expectation. I would say though at the earliest date that we can really get things up and running is likely after the start of May. Um, you know, it's, it's really contingent upon getting the contract, having a review, and filing, you know, having the necessary timeline for public input, um, which is still required, of course, as part of, even though it is an emergency, we do have a required timeline before we can make things final, submit the paperwork to HUD, and with all said and done, I would guess that we would be in early May. Um, but that said, we, we anticipate having another one of these forms, hopefully next week, so we can share more details about how that program would operate, and we would still be able to actually start thinking about um, educating people about how they would fill out the paperwork, what information would be needed so that we can get things rolling right away as soon as possible for people. So people essentially would be lined up and ready to go as soon as funds become available. Great. Thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. Uh, we have a comment, um, which I'll gladly read. It says, thanks for doing this, Adam. Uh, God bless you and your staff. Stay safe and healthy and joyful, and we will get through this. Hang on. So I... I second that. Thank you to, to, to Jenny and Allie and Joan and ACMI and everybody who's been part of this. So thank, thank you for submitting that. Um, another question, perhaps at the end of today's session, you could let us know if there will be other virtual town hall meetings, their topics, and how do we learn about them? Thank you. So uh, I guess as opposed to waiting till the end, I'll say it now and I'll say it again when we close. Uh, we do plan on having there be a, a series of these virtual town forums. Um, we, we were deciding to call them virtual town forums instead of town halls to be clear that we're not actually going to meet in town hall, which is sad, but the, is the state of our reality right now. So uh, yeah, our plan is to, to really try to focus on three subject matter areas, um, small businesses and nonprofits like we're talking about today, uh, general public health uh, slash town operations focused. Uh, and then we're also uh, having discussions with the school department about whether or not we could offer an education or school department focused town forum. And what we would plan to do is try to schedule more of these um, likely for next week. Uh, we'll post them on uh, the town website. We'll send them out via town notices. We'll send them out to local media uh, and try to make them as to, uh, available to as wide a group of um, folks in town as possible. So um, we've had a fairly good attendance here. We actually have about 25, uh, 25 residents on or 25 residents and business owners on right now um, in addition to the panelists. So 
um, we'll take that as a good start. And yeah, we definitely want to continue to do this to try to provide uh, a back and forth between town government and residents and business owners as we go forward. Uh, so there's two more questions have come in. One is, have you heard anything about grants that could become available for businesses carrying small business loans that are not federally backed? Um, Jenny, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the CDBG uh, grants that we're looking at doing, we don't pay attention to people's, um, th there's no consideration of people having outstanding loans with that application. Okay. Process, that correct? That. Yeah. I would not work against you in order to receive this grant funding. Yep. Okay. Sorry, I, I'm not aware of other sources of support, however, for individuals who have small business loans that are not federally backed, other than the ones that we've mentioned, um, which, you know, I think you'd have to go through the various grant guidelines to better understand how they view other source, other loans or liabilities um, in evaluating whether or not they can uh, make that loan or grant. Great. Thank you, Jenny. So another question, would we be willing to set up virtual meetings similar to the ones that Ali does with center merchants so that business owners can talk to each other? Um, this questioner is saying she'd love to connect uh, with other people. So uh, Ali, what, what do you think? Could we put together Zoom meetings for the, the business groups within town? Yes, um, yes. I'm actually heartened to receive that question and that's not the first time I've gotten that in the past week. Um, just for folks who may not be aware, I meet on a monthly basis with business owners in all of our three main business districts um, pretty informally just to keep up on things that are happening in town and have um, just a regular exchange of information um, between what the business owners are seeing in the community, um, issues they're confronted with, anything from parking to you know public works type issues. Um, just, or if there's a major project we have going on, we just get together and talk. Um, and we need to start doing that again, just in this new format. So I plan on, um, this week scheduling those out. Um, so stay tuned, um, to your email. I've been emailing the business owners a lot. I have a pretty comprehensive list, um, that said it's not complete. So I hope, um, when this, when we're wrapping up and my email address is out there, if you are not receiving emails from me, email me and I will add you to the list. Go ahead, Jenny. I just want to note that um, we are actively working with the Ch Arlington Chamber of Commerce. And I think that working in partnership with them, the chamber has been reaching out to chamber members as well as non-members. Um, very much so through their virtual forums that they've been hosting pretty much every Monday. Um, that content has been posted on their webpage for anybody who's interested in learning more about those resources. Um, but I will also note that we do intend to have a state of the town, which is something that we've done in the past. Um, and that will be another forum where we're sharing information about where we are with current affairs as well as future affairs about the town in relationship to the business community. Great. Thank you, Jenny. So there are right now no other questions have come in. So I think we can probably start to wrap up. Um, Jenny and Allie, do you have any closing thoughts you'd like to share? Um, just that if, uh, if it's not too much trouble to put back on the screen the contacts, uh, sure. just to, to again plug that Allie is a wonderful resource in the community and is available um, to answer questions and guide people to resources and uh, provide support, as well as Beth Locke, the executive director at the chamber. Um, there's also a NEMA hotline that might be of interest to people who have uh, direct concerns and you know they may be redirected to another resource, but um, it's, a, it's a good opportunity right now during this crisis to reach out uh, to that particular hotline as well. Um, and I just want to say thank you very much uh, to Adam and to Ali and, and to ACMI, um, as well as Joan Roman, for helping us to host this forum. 
um, and that we will continue to, communi continue to communicate additional information as it becomes available, both through the town website, through the town notices, and any other social media that we can put out there, as well as in a future forum. And I look forward to talking with people in the future and seeing people again. Thank you, Jenny. How about you, Ellie? Uh, yeah, um, I just want to thank everyone who is participating today um, and to Jenny and Adam and Joan and ACMI and Beth at the Chamber and anyone who's called me or emailed me, um, feel free to contact me. It really um, is so helpful to keep the lines of communication open. I, I can't help you unless um, you let me know what's going on. So. Um, Thank you all. I know it's a really hard time and just um, please hang in there um, and ask for help. Bef like, I know we all need it, but ask for help like right away. Um, so we have time to try and figure something out for you or connect you with the right person or resource um, or whatever. But uh, hang in there. You guys are awesome. I know you're working so hard um, and I really appreciate you all. Thanks. Thank you, Allie. Uh, and, and I'll close uh, really echoing the same. Uh, thank you to Jenny. Thank you to Allie. Thank you to Joan. Uh, thank you to the team at ACMI who have just been amazing throughout this and helping us get public meetings aired and meetings like this uh, available to the public through uh, multi multiple media channels. Uh, and thank you to all of you who are joining today. Uh, hopefully this can be the first of many. Hopefully we can continue to get um, more and, uh, more and uh, wider and a more diverse audience. Um, stimulate more questions, more engagement. And to, to echo what Ali just said, um, I, I, we do understand just how challenging these times are for you in the business community. And um, though our means might be limited, uh, we are definitely willing to do anything that we can do to try to help you get through these times. So uh, whether it be joining us with this next virtual town forum or emailing Ali or myself or Beth or Jenny or whoever it might be, uh, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we, we, we're, we're here to support as we best can um, so that we all come out of this. Uh, we all come out of this together. So with that, uh, let's, let's wrap up this first virtual town forum. Again, uh, thank you to our, our panelists as well as our participants. And we'll be getting another one scheduled hopefully next week. And we'll, uh, we look forward to connecting again. Thank you, everybody.